Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar. In this series, our next topic is review of ancient Indian literature and how Indian psychology helps us to understand human behavior. Most significant contribution of uh, Indian Psychology Institute is there. So that is why let us know what they are mentioning and how this institute helping us to understand Indian psychology in better way. Cornelison, who is director of Indian Psychology Institute teaches integral psychology at the Sri Aurobindo uh, International Center of Education in Pondicherry. He is a Dutch physician who settled in India in 1976. Presently, he is involved in a variety of projects concerned with the development of a new approach to psychology based on the Indian tradition. He founded the Sri Aurobindo Center for Consciousness Studies in 2001 and the Indian Psychology Institute in 2006. He organized several conferences, seminars and workshops on Indian psychology and edited three books on the same subject, Consciousness and its Transformation in 2001, Indian Psychology, Consciousness and Yoga in 2004 and foundation of Indian psychology in two volumes in 2010. Sources I have mentioned here. So, let us know what, what is uh, Indian psychology. I think to some extent you know because I have covered this topic in previous classes already. But once again, its definitions and how uh, Indian psychology could contribute to positive psychology. Indian psychology is an approach to psychology based on Indian ethos, the characteristic spirit of the Indian civilization. One could also say that it is a psychology rooted in the consciousness based Indian worldview, yoga and a life affirming spirituality. It has been highlighted that it is not a psychology specifically or exclusively suitable for people living in the Indian subcontinent or of Indian origin. Indian psychologists feel that the Indian tradition can make valuable contributions to the psychological understanding of all human beings, irrespective of their descent or cultural background. I think you would agree on this point if we use Sachidanand scale, if we use Vikaras, we have already used Vedic personality inventory in which we study Sat or Rajas Tamas in different cultures. So, similarly, these constructs help us to understand human behavior across the cultures. As Sri Aurobindo mentioned that uh, yoga is nothing but practical psychology. So, our Indian psychology could contribute to understand human behavior. What is relevance of Indian thoughts or Indian psychology? There are various documentations now for Indian psychology and how it could contribute to the psychology as well as to its branches. The majority of ancient Indian scriptures uh, from uh, Hindus, from Buddhism, Jainism uh, emphasize on self-realization, samadhi or nirvana. After 1960, humanistic psychology emerged and psychologists became interested in paranormal dimensions of growth. Maslow's theory of self-actualization and transcendental self-actualization established the link to the major part of ancient Indian theories and methods and almost the whole of uh, uh, ancient Indian writings became psychologically relevant. Psychology of consciousness, parapsychology, psychology of religion and transpersonal psychology borrow extensively from Indian writings. So, these are the branches of psychology which have highlighted or give due weightage to Indian writings. Buddhist 
psychology, yoga psychology, Jain psychology are frequently found in modern psychological literature now. Many books listed in psychology now include uh, books on yoga, Buddhism and Jain. There seems to be a paradigm shift in western psychology, a shift from the notion of mental disease and healing to personal growth, the reference point shifting from the statistical average or normal to the ideal or upper limits of a man's potentiality that is objective of positive psychology. So, not only Indian scholars or Indian psychology and related fields, even western scholars focusing more on ideal or upper limit of man's potentiality. Buddhist, the psychological relevance of the four noble truths and eightfold path and Buddhist techniques of meditation are of considerable relevance in modern psychology. If we take example of Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita gives an essence of Indian way of life and philosophy and it describes the four yogas, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raj Yoga and Gyan Yoga. So, similarly there are various concepts which have been borrowed in the mainstream of psychology. Like there are several books on the psychological relevance of Gita. Maslow's theory of meta motivation is very similar to the concept of Nishkam Karm outlined in the Gita. So, there are various ways where Indian scholars are contributing to the mainstream of psychology. Patanjali's Astang Yoga is a very systematic presentation of Raj Yoga. Both Bhagavad Gita and Astang Yoga are supposed to have great value to the psychology of consciousness as well as personal growth. Modern interest in relaxation can be traced to study on Savasana. Rising popularity of meditation practice links psychology to religious practices and philosophy. The psychosomatic relationships was well uh, known and salient in ancient times. Ayurveda describes how emotions like desires lead to both physical and mental diseases. Importance of three gunas we know, sattva guna, rajas guna and tamas guna. So, these are certain contributions from Indian psychology or Indian literature which are contributing to the uh, mainstream of psychology. I have borrowed this slide once again from your first lecture in which we highlighted on the Indian psychology what it is and uh, how it is contributing to the mainstream psychology. So, Indian psychology has its roots in the diverse traditions of knowledge deliberated upon in various texts or sastras as well as the practices and meaning embodied in various forms shared by the people loka in the zone of Indian civilization. That was one of the definitions. Indian psychology primarily deals with the inner state of a person taking consciousness as the primary subject matter of study. So, Indian psychology could be counted as hallmark of spirituality and inner directedness. Since the time of uh, the Upanishad, Jiva or living organism has been characterized as Gyata, Bhogta and Karta. So, one who knows, feels pleasure and pain and acts. So, following the Indian conceptions of the Jiva as Gyata, Bhogta, Karta, three main form of yoga are suggested, uh, Gyan Yoga or Knowledge Yoga, uh, Bhakti or Devotion Yoga and the Karma or Action Yoga. So, these are the ways to serve as a uh, you know Gyata, Bhogta and Karta. So, these, these are the explanation of human behavior as per Indian psychology. The Indian tradition includes psychological phenomena like consciousness and joy as the core element of the reality and knowledge of the self as the fundamental science. Health, human development and well-being when we discuss the Indian ideas and concepts like Ahankara, Anasakti where we have also developed a skill to measure Anasakti have been explored in reference to health and well-being. Neki in 1973 has tried to build therapeutic interventions for the promotion of mental health 
and well being uh, using yoga and has come up with the model uh, called guru chela therapy which involves the teacher disciple relationship developed in the indian tradition or can say uh, second person approach kakkas also discussed about healers mystics and doctors and about their indigenous healing practices it clearly indicates the role of traditional healers in maintaining mental health in traditional societies these dimensions of psychology are encouraging psychologists to develop theories and concepts which do not take from any western thought but derive entirely from indian traditions of thought and can be applied universally so there are various ways or studies documented already in our literature where scholars have worked in this direction on the other hand as we know we have already discussed there are various books even in uh, western culture now or western from uh, western universities now where they are giving uh, due weight is to religion and spirituality in modern time for example this book religion and spirituality across cultures which we have already discussed why religion and uh, spirituality matter for public health by, written by professor dong so in 2018 so the quite latest book it is on the other hand in indian psychology or uh, spirituality in indian psychology already written by professor bhauk so review of ancient indian literature philosophical and religious spiritual literature which is well known fact on the other hand even western scholars giving due weight is to religion and spirituality positive factors from religions are revealed and discussed in the latest literature from western cultures as i have mentioned earlier also in this uh, book they have covered uh, christianity they have covered buddhism hinduism jainism sikhism and various other uh, religions how these are contributing to the well being along with all these explanations as you know we have developed these skills in uh, based on indian constructs and these actually explanations or through psychological test we could bring or we could fill up gaps between mainstream constructs and the indian constructs because if we have skills on all these constructs which we have in indian setting like sachidanand anasakti sukh dukh ashtang yoga sat prajas tamas vikaras savadaya or we we may add various other constructs from indian psychology in this list so if we have uh, skills available then easily we can study like uh, western scholars or mainstream scholars by uh, studying correlation regression multivariate analysis and can study correlation among mainstream constructs and these newly established constructs through psychological test and uh, this is the way to fill up gap between uh, you know mainstream constructs and in indian constructs however we know these skills have certain limitations and we need to do series of research to establish these psychological test further we have to have revalidation or whether these skills working properly or not in various cultures or as well as translation in different languages of these skills so all those things are required here and we recommend a series of researches on psychological testing of these skills let's focus on association between indian constructs and constructs of mainstream psychology so correlation between vikaras and positive and negative experiences positive experiences and balanced experiences were found to be significantly negatively correlated with vikaras and its factors while negative experience was found to be significantly positively correlated in our study it seems as per theory in appropriate direction because we perceive positive experiences against vikaras negative experiences aligning with uh, vikaras it is said that vikaras can work as destabilizing forces for self and a person may not attain peace or long as these forces are in play and continue to destabilize him or her 
as I discussed in the last class, in another cross-cultural study, the results indicated that Sattva accounted for about 48 uh, percent of variance in Czechs people predicted by emotional well-being, psychological well-being and flourishing. 56 percent in Indians predicted by emotional well-being, social and uh, psychological well-being, flourishing and positive experience and about 55 percent variance in Americans which was predicted by psychological well-being, flourishing and negative experiences. Uh, similarly, Rajas accounted for uh, about 21 percent variance in Czechs predicted by flourishing and uh, negative experience, 8 percent variance in Indians predicted by social well-being and negative experience and 54 percent variance in Americans predicted by positive uh, experience and negative experience. A total of 50 percent variance accounted for Tamas in Czechs and predicted by psychological well-being, flourishing and negative experience. 20 percent variance in Indians predicted by social well-being, psychological well-being, flourishing and Spain uh, negative and 64 percent variance in Americans predicted by social well-being, flourishing, positive and negative experiences. In another study, we studied correlation between uh, Satchit Anand and its factors and scale of positive and negative experiences, the mental health continuum and flourishing. Satchidanand and its uh, factors were found to be significantly positively correlated with flourishing and positive experiences and uh, were negatively correlated with negative experiences. So, I think through psychological testing, we could fill up the gap between mainstream psychological constructs and Indian psychological constructs and could see theoretically how they should be correlated with each other and how these uh, have been revealed in empirical researches. My next focus is on socio-cultural factors affecting well-being. I have already discussed with you, surrounding environment is very important. Socio-cultural environmental factors are very important because some of these factors facilitate our well-being, others may hinder our well-being. And even in World Happiness Report and in other studies, they have discussed about positive institutions. They are saying that even country is an important factor, whether in this country trust and safety is there or corruption is there. So, uh, corruption versus trust and safety, these are the factors which facilitate or hinder our well-being. And I discussed with you about the behavior which is interaction of our personal traits and environmental factors. That is why socio-cultural factors are very important. Let us know what kind of socio-cultural factors we have in Indian setting. We conducted a research in 2009. This research was on 9 to 12th class rural adolescents girls. We observed that 76 percent reported gender discrimination, 42 percent reported unsafe environment and large number of traditions as obstacles. Most frequently observed phrases in responses were, uh, world is very bad. Jamana bhot kharaab hai, others wealth or property, log hume paraya dhan samajhte hain. Society thinks of us as burden, samaj bol samajhta hai. So, such kind of statements we observe frequently. To some extent, we can say such kind of environmental conditions can hamper our well-being. Chaudhary and Chaudhary also observed that almost one-third girls attributed the reasons for their discrimination to society, its values and the customs. So, we should identify such kind of things and try to reduce which have negative impact on our well-being. Similarly, in another research, we focused on interpersonal relationship. And in this research, which is conducted on rural women, was very simple sentences. We did a survey and in this survey, we asked very simple question particular interpersonal relation may be positive or negative uh, has been increased, decreased or equal in the last decade. In this research, simple questions were like that. For example, fighting, it has been increased, decreased 
or the equal since the last decade. Similarly, injustice, annyay, uh, lying, ek dusre ke samne joot bolna, uh, competitiveness, mental tension, social pressure and we had some positive interpersonal relations also like uh, a level of satisfaction in the society has been increased, decreased or equal since the last decade. Altruism, respect, cooperation, sacrifice, forgiveness, compassion. We had some other questions on uh, economic problems, economic level, facilities, physical labor, mechanical health, overall quality of life. Broadly, we observed that in the results, they are saying that negative interpersonal relations like fighting, injustice, lying, competitiveness, mental tension increased in the society, could see red section. On the other hand, decreased, you could see this section where they are saying that altruism, uh, respect, cooperation, sacrifice, forgiveness, compassion, these characteristics or characteristics have been increased in the society. On the other hand, very interesting fact we observed, they said economic problems as well as economic level both have been increased. So, a red section you could see once again, 67%, uh, 73% people responded like that. So, uh, can we say now we are more materialistic? And that is why along with economic level increasing, we are perceiving economic problems have increased. So, similarly, you know in this study we had various uh, factors and finally on the basis of these results, we documented that quality of life when we take into account interpersonal relationship, people are saying that it has been deteriorated. On the other hand, when they take into account facilities available, they are saying that yes, quality of life has been improved. So, quality of life decreases when we take into account interpersonal relationship and improves with respect to the facilities available. So, that way I think that is a signal to the psychologist. We need to reinforce and acknowledge strengths of our society and safeguard them. As you know, not only in collectivistic culture or in our culture, interpersonal relations are important, but even in western studies, studies from various countries focusing on interpersonal relationships or social support that is a hallmark of happiness. So, that is why we should do uh, you know such kind of researches as well as to have certain intervention programs or ways to develop better interpersonal relationships. I will not focus much on this section because I have already discussed about uh, these studies. But in reference to cultural context, let us once again highlight this study. You know about this study which I have already discussed with you. In this case, we ask rural women about uh, their rating on overall happiness level and then they you know displayed reason here. And uh, then we divided it in the three sections, flourishing, moderating, languishing and try to find out what are the reasons they are counting here. So, broadly once again summary of uh, these results, they said uh, for suffering reasons, health issues, death of spouse, poor financial, economic uh, household conditions for the struggling period, they said they experienced mixed feelings of happiness and sadness, happiness experienced was attributed to their family flourishing, uh, since that uh, their current uh, circumstances are good for flourishing, they said children's employment, financial stability, children respect elders, that is why they are in flourishing mode. They had cordial relationship among family members as well as with neighbors, they had for suffering, they observed lack of uh, earning uh, of family member and employment, daughter becoming a widow, alcohol consumption, habit of uh, son or uh, spouse. Uh, on the other hand, in struggling mode, they said loving family and uh, satisfying life, health, responsible and obedient children, occasional attempts to 
find happiness in self. On the other hand, in flourishing, they observe joyful family circumstances, settled family, good economic condition, residing in a joint family, sense of belongingness. So again, in the last section, they said uh, causes of suffering, once on deteriorating health, inability to attend religious uh, activities, an uncertain future as cause of uh, low level of well-being. On the other hand, in struggling, they had uh, various positive points like meaning, uh, religious bonding that improves life and peace. But somehow, somewhere they had mishappenings in the family and they counted the, these mishappenings and that is why they had moderate level of or struggling level of happiness. On the other hand, in flourishing, they showed high level of contented level as well as uh, faith in God and uh, it helped uh, them face problems. So, here I have re-referenced this study because I want to say if you collect data from say urban society or maybe school going children or maybe college students, do you think you would be getting similar kind of responses? So, it means socio-cultural factors matter and we should give weightage to such kind of factors and that is why I discuss this st study once again in this reference. So, main point here are Indian psychology could contribute immensely to psychology and strengthen our understanding of human behavior. We need to broaden our basket of research methods. Studies signify the role of socio-demographic and socio-cultural factors in Indian settings. When I again talk about Indian psychology, again I will go with the, this uh, institute's uh, quotation. Rich in content, sophisticated in its methods and valuable in its applied aspects, Indian psychology is pregnant with possibilities for the birth of new models in psychology that would have relevance not only to India, but also to psychology in general. So, that is why we Indian psychologists should focus on all those models which are not still part of Indian psychology or mainstream of psychology and we try to understand human behavior with all new models, theories, religious spiritual practices, religious spiritual ways of explaining human behavior we should document in the field of psychology. At the end of this session, I would recommend to watch this video mental health for all by involving all by Dr. Vikram Patel. It will help us to understand last section of positive psychology and our next last class. Thank you very much.